After taking out the Joker in the original Batman NES game, our Cape Crusader hero is tasked once again with defeating the clown-faced maniac in Batman Return of the Joker. The plot is, Joker has been stealing precious metals from the mines of the city, one of which is toxic enough to be used for explosives, and it's up to Batman to save the day again. Like the last game, it's a side-scrolling platformer, but instead of a beat-em-up, this is a run-and-gun shooter. You start off with a wrist projector, which fires out a decent attack of projectiles, but you find special weapons all over the place by grabbing these letter icons you'll find in boxes that you can shoot up. The C is for crossbow, which fires this big slow projectile that has zero rapid rate. You have to wait for it to hit something or go off screen before you can fire again, but charging it up leads to this spread shot that wreaks havoc, so charge frequently when you have this. The B is the Batarang. It fires off projectiles similar to the regular wrist projector, but it follows enemies or boxes or whatever is a target. When charged up, it'll create this big ball that fires off, but you can't hold it and release at your command. It just shoots as soon as it's charged. So timing it to hit something at the right time is easier said than done. The N is the Sonic Neutralizer. It fires off two shots in an arc pattern that come together which can hit two enemies at once, but also completely miss something right in front of you. Powering it up will fire off a pretty nice little wave, but it's quick to die off. And finally, the S is the Star Shield, which fires stars in multiple directions and has a good rapid rate, and when charged up, it creates what looks like a shield of stars around you. But this shield doesn't protect you from jack shit, but whatever it hits will cause damage. Your weapon of choice may depend on personal taste. I personally like to use either the crossbow or star shield, but to each his own. When you come across these boxes that leave weapons, it'll be totally random which of the four pops out at any given spot, but you can simply shoot it to change the letter and pick up whatever weapon you want at any given time. Just do it quickly before it disappears. You can also pick up these energy capsules that get dropped by enemies which will lead to a temporary invincibility after you've collected 8 of them. During this state, you can also wipe out all enemies on the screen by holding down the B button. But this does wipe out all the capsules and you can't use the invincibility anymore. There are 7 total stages, each with 2 segments, plus a third boss battle segment on most stages. Although these bosses are all generic characters never seen before or since this game in the Batman franchise. You'll start off with three lives, but you get infinite continues and a password in case you want to shut the game down. And you can pick up where you left off within the segment you died in, not the whole stage. So the game throws you a bone here, which is really nice of them because the game is no walk in the park. First off, your sprite is fairly huge, and while Batman looks better and is more well defined than he did in the first game, you're also a larger target as a result. And the fact that the controls are a bit stiff doesn't help matters a lot. This wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world if the game focused on hand-to-hand -hand combat, but there's often a lot of enemies to shoot at or guns to avoid, so movement and positioning is very important. Not to mention all the pits, moving platforms, and enemies hiding off-screen to give you a cheap surprise hit. But like I said, the game is generous with power-ups, and you get all the continues you could ask for. It's also worth noting that the graphics are some of the best on the NES. The backgrounds are nice and detailed, and the animation is very smooth, not to mention the soundtrack is strong as well. Plus, it's just fun to shoot shit up. That being said, the game's general clunkiness brings it down a couple of pegs. It's more than playable, but has a pretty fair share of flaws. So the game starts off with a cutscene of the Joker laughing, the bat signal going up, and Batman emerging. An abbreviated way of saying that the Joker's back and Batman's tasked with stopping him. At the beginning of the first stage, shoot down this guy that drops down from the sky. He hops around a bit and starts shooting at you in short bursts. Take him out. Then watch out for these spiked balls on chains that drop from the ceiling. Slowly approach this area to let them drop in front of you before advancing. 
when scaling up here. Keep in mind that these small platforms will drop down if you stand on them, so move quickly and let these knife throwing dickheads attack before unloading on them and blast these boxes open to grab power ups on your way up. Power up your weapon to take out the statues. They wait a little while before attacking. You'll spot a zeppelin in the distance and it's on to the next segment of the stage. This one's an auto scroller. You're on a building underneath the zeppelin that fires at you from overhead. Avoid the bullets from the guns on the ship and whenever one of these pricks shows up, quickly take them out cause they fire at a decent rate. Destroy the boxes along your way to pick up some goodies and be sure not to get trapped behind anything cause the auto scroll will cause it to crush you. Soon enough, you'll reach the end and it's on to the boss. He'll fire a wave of bullets towards you and at an upward angle, so you're gonna want to stay low. When he fires straight, slide past him and attack from behind and watch out for these little machines that come down from overhead. After dealing enough damage, you'll take him out and it's on to the next stage. Take out this box at the beginning for a power up and then ride this moving platform and jump over the knife this dickhead tosses at you and kill him. Watch out for the electricity streams on the floor here. They won't kill you, but they will do you harm. And don't let these dipshits up here distract you from getting off the platform at the right time. Don't wait too long to get off. Soon after, you'll come across these guys that jump off the platforms. Let them pass over you and kill them before they shoot so you can get across the platforms they abandoned. After a couple of these guys, it's on to the next segment, where you'll be flying the whole time, or at least on a jetpack. These flying fucks will follow each other in a row as they swing all about, Stay back so you can keep them in front of you at all times and fire them down. These spiked balls can't be killed, but they just bob up and down, so avoid them and stay between the attacks from these gray ships. Line up with them when you can to take them out. Having the crossbow is always helpful in this stage just because you have enemies in all directions in a few spots, and it makes that all a lot easier. Stay directly in front of this ship, it fires a lot of missiles, but they go in every direction except straight ahead. So move accordingly, blast him to hell, and you're all done with the stage. No boss segment. Stage 3 starts off on a snowy mountain. Break up the boxes behind the snow for some power-ups, and tread lightly. You'll want to stop short from time to time when this falling shit comes raining down from the sky. And you definitely want to mind the gap in the bridge you'll fall through if you just walk across. Be ready to jump when these guys show up tossing tornadoes at you, jump over them and unload on them. When you walk on these frozen waterfalls, your traction gets slippery due to the, you know, ice. So watch your footing, especially around pits, and soon after you're done with the segment. Next segment, you're underground. Time your approach so you walk past this spinning blade daisy chain that looks like one of those fireball chains in Super Mario Brothers. Take out the box for an item, and watch the discolored rocks in the ceiling. They'll drop when you walk under it, so stop short to lure it down in front of you, and stay back to avoid the debris as well. When you get onto this moving platform, be ready to quickly jump to avoid this guy's attack and fire back. Just be sure to land on the platform, it moves at a pretty brisk pace. There'll be a few more of these falling rocks by these pits, you especially don't want to get caught by them and sent down, so walk carefully, take out these guys, and you'll soon enter a section with a spiked ceiling. Wipe out these spiders that get in your way, and only advance when the ceiling is up high, duck down low when it drops, and avoid jumping as much as possible. You can simply walk across some of these gaps when the ground is lower in front of you. Right after that is the boss. He'll fly towards you with his jetpack, Stay back and use the ledges to jump over him before he starts firing and blast him from behind. He'll then relocate, so do the same thing from the opposite side. If you time it right, you can get him to just fire at nobody while you get as many shots in as possible. His pattern never changes, so keep this up until he's dead and the stage is clear. Next stage starts off on a moving train. It's a slow moving auto scroller so stay as far back as possible for the majority of it to maximize your reaction time from both the pits and enemies. There'll be these jetpack guys that swoop down, jump and blast them, and wipe out any boxes for power-ups that emerge. 
Watch out for these green guys that hide behind the junk piles and spit a barrage of fire. It's a bit of a delay before they attack, so kill them quickly and get around them when they're hiding behind these walls. After dealing with a series of this shit, you'll reach the next segment, where you have more of these conveyor belts. Watch the pits, especially when you've got this asshole throwing barrels at you. If you retreat to throw a counterattack, you're just going to end up walking into the path of another, so jump to the next platform first, then let him have it. You'll end up in this elevator where you'll have to deal with all these guns from overhead. The small ones shift from side to side and fire a couple bullets at a time, just weave between them. This larger one, you're going to want to get away from and jump and shoot. It unleashes a pretty decent wave of bullets. You'll soon hit up another elevator where the small guns come across on a wavy pattern track, which leaves it on the screen for longer and can get in your way, especially if you have to deal with these pricks at the same time. So keep your eye on them, mainly focusing on the bullets until the gun gets close, and wipe out the guys that show up as quickly as possible so it's one last thing. Right after that is the boss fight, which is a clusterfuck. You've got a sensor up top that'll charge up a shot, which you can see the progress of with the meter up here. When it fills up, it drops a wave of energy that'll hurt like a bitch, so you want to attack as often as possible to keep that at bay. Then there are lasers that shoot from the corners, and this little machine that pops in from time to time. Get that machine out of the way whenever you see it, weave your way between the lasers, and blast the sensor. That's the main target. You'll want to be as quick as you can, because during any interval where you're not landing hits, it'll regenerate its energy. So yeah, blast away. Keep this going until it's destroyed, and you're on to the next stage. Now you're in a sewer. And the water, hopefully that's all it is, flows to either side. So watch which direction the stream is flowing, because you'll slide along with it. These guys pop out of the pits and fire at you as you approach. Quickly take them out, and watch out for these things that come down the waterfall and flow with the stream. Even if you have to stop the fire, keep yourself in a forward motion whenever the stream is sending you backwards. You don't want to end up in the drink. And the fact that you freeze momentarily from a hit can really bite you in the ass here. So stay as far away from any edge as you can. There's not a lot of space between them, but you'll have to maneuver through. Be careful on these floating platforms, they move fast. After a little while, you're on to the next segment. It's another flying one, just like 2-2. It's really the same shit with a different flavor. So same strategy as before, stay back, avoid contact, and blast everything to hell. Just like its counterpart, there's no boss here, it's on to the next one. Blast the boxes for power-ups, and get ready for more conveyor belts that lead to certain death with goons on the opposite sides. Kill them while maintaining your footing, do it from afar so you don't slip into the spikes. Then you've got these waves of energy that pass vertically. Much like the things that flow down the waterfall, there's a limited amount of space to maneuver between them, so be careful and use the slide if you can transition back to the jump really quick. These platforms drop after you land on them, so spend as little time on them as possible, and it's on to the next segment. It's another auto-scroller, but here you'll follow a tank from right to left, but this is one of those auto-scrollers that makes logical sense, because you've got a bridge collapsing behind you. Someone will pop out of the tank to throw Molotov cocktails at you. Stay off center from it while still jumping to shoot, but you also want to keep in mind that drifting too far back will land you in trouble with the collapsing bridge. And going too far ahead means you're a target for these falling spiked balls, so you have to find the sweet spots in between. Eventually the tank will get to where it's going. Once you take out the douche nozzle from here, you'll move on to the boss fight. The Joker is in this flying ship, tossing death bubbles, two at a time from one side or the other. You can slip between them, but whenever he shifts his position, the bubbles shift with him, so now you're in the line of fire and you have to adjust accordingly. It keeps you on your toes, and that's not even factoring in how he swoops down and tries to kill you by crashing right into you too. Watch his patterns, he'll either glide up and down along the vertical center of the screen while firing off his bubbles, or he'll swoop down into this U pattern. Stay on the far edge when he does this. Fire at him from directly underneath when he pauses, 
or when you can get out of his attack radius. He takes a lot of hits to kill, so stay patient, and when you take him out, he'll take off via Go Go Gadget Copter, and it's on to the last stage. The first section has some of the schmucks you've seen before, and then this cascade of motherfuckers that fly together in synchronized fashion. All you can really do is line yourself up in the gap and crouch down, while keeping your eye on these dipshits in the towers. Then you'll end up in a narrow passageway of moving platforms, that's always fun. Watch out for the guns that await you on the other side of this pit, wipe them out, and then these platforms will crash right into the walls or ceilings of spikes, so get off the ride almost immediately upon hitching it. And it's on to the next segment, which is the final battle with Joker. He's in this massive fucking robot that fires orbs at an angle from its shoulder things. And it also drops these electric saw blades that roll around in the dead center. Taking out the shoulder things will deactivate them and it'll be one less orb coming at you. You'll see the light die out from each of them as you wipe them out. But this just minimizes his attacks. Your target is the head. Try to get to the far end of either side. You'll be able to avoid the saws easier and the orbs are slower so you can evade them easier from further away. After enough hits, you'll blow out a layer of the Joker's shielding and he'll change tactics. He'll still fire saws, but they're split apart and then come back together. Get to the middle so they veer around you and then jump over them when they close in. Then he'll throw an assortment of orbs that bounce around, slide to get away from them. In the intervals, blast away at the Joker. You can fire directly underneath between his attacks or crouch at the bottom corner to just unload on him. After taking him out, Joker falls out of his machine, the place starts blowing up, and Batman hauls ass out of there and the credits roll. It's left ambiguous whether Joker dies or not, but we will see another Batman NES game with Batman Returns, based on the movie. And we all know that the Penguin and Catwoman are the baddies of that one. Although it's more complicated with the latter. And you know what? Let's not even get into it yet. This game is for a later time. That wraps up this game. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.